Hey, what's good with y'all boys? Hey, what's good with y'all boys? Hey, check this out, man. We got my dog PhD on waves right here. He about to show us how to make a do rag. Bro, I want to know how to make a do rag. All right, do rags are expensive. You feel me? Even though I got like two hundred of them, but bro, do rags are expensive. I know some of y'all can't afford it, but he gonna show us how to make the do rag. So you better, you better show us. I'm gonna be pissed. Hey, make sure y'all like the video. Make sure y'all follow my Instagram down below. Hey, send me y'all waves. I will make a rating video. So send me y'all waves. And bro, let's see what my boy What's got. up, waivers? Welcome to PhD and Waves. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own do-rag. Making your own do-rags is literally so easy. Um, it's literally just two I identical pieces of fabric. And then it's literally just sewn down the middle to bring them together and then you have your own do-rag the first thing you need is some fabric uh you want to use um either satin where is that at where's this at bro where's this at in or polyester those are two good fabrics to you know get started on making do rags right here i have some fabric you can get fabric from a fabric store in your area you can get it online oh, okay. but i went with one yard and with that one yard i was able to make around two do rags so the next thing you need is you need um something to trace uh you could either use a do rag that you already have if you if you like the sizing of the do rag that you have you can use that uh, right here, I have a do-rag that I really like. I like the size and the shape. Um, if you don't already have a do-rag, I will leave some measurements uh, for... If y'all don't know how to make a do-rag, here go the measurements right here, bro. Here you go. If do-rags is expensive for you, here you go. My boy, hey, he got the measurements drawn up. Here you go, bro. Y'all, I just cut my hair too. You feel me? But here you go. He got the measurements. Okay drawing your mock-ups all right so the first thing that you want to do is you want to get an outline of a do-rag so here here i'm just tracing the do-rag on okay. another piece of paper so i have the outline so i can cut it out long feet boy. my boy got some long feet <laughs> so right now i have a do-rag that i like i place it on a big piece of paper and i'm just drawing the outline of the do-rag you can also just take the do-rag and place it on another piece of fabric to cut out but I think you will get a more accurate uh, outline if you trace it on a piece of paper, okay. like cardboard first. But whatever is easier for you, you can trace it on a piece of paper or you can directly trace it on a fabric to cut out. So right here, I'm just cutting out the do-rag shape that I made from my other do-rag and I'm getting the outline. And then I'm going to use this cut out and I'm going to place it on another piece of fabric. Just do whatever is easier for you. All right. So the next thing you want to do is you want to get your fabric that you want to make the do-rag out of and you want to fold it in half. The so reason you so want to fold it in half is because you're just going to trace it directly on the fabric. And then once you start cutting, you're going to easily get two identical pieces of fabric with one cut. So you basically want to put your do-rag or your outline of your do-rag on the fabric. And you basically want to trace the outline onto the fabric that you want to make your do-rag out of. So that's basically what I'm doing here. A quick tip while you're tracing the outline is you can trace a little bit extra fabric outside of the original outline. Just in case you make a mistake, you do have extra fabric to cut off. Hopefully that makes sense. And the next thing I did was I'm basically cutting out the outline of the do-rag. Like I said before, I, I uh, folded the fabric in half. How many y'all gonna half. try this? How many y'all gonna try this? Take the measurements, go to a fabric store, buy this type of material, trace it up. I think he said you gotta sew it. That way, while I'm cutting, all I'm doing is making one cut and then at the end of this process, I'm going to end up with two identical pieces of fabric. Also, another reason why you want to leave some extra fabric on the end is if you cut out the design a little bit too sloppy, you can go back and cut those pieces off. But here I am with two identical pieces of fabric that I can sew together. So let's move on to the next step. All right, waivers. So like I said, I cut out the two pieces of fabric 
I got one here and then I got the other one. As you can see on the edge, it is a little bit rough, but once uh, I bring it, it is, to the boy. tailor, um, the machine does cut off any like, you know, frail pieces of fabric. So if you have a sewing machine, you could do it by yourself if you know how to sew, but I don't know how to sew, so I am gonna bring this to the tailor. All right, so here I am at the tailor. What he's doing now is cutting off any, you know, uneven sections of the do-rag. That's why I did leave a little bit more extra space because I knew he was gonna clean up my, my cuts because I didn't really do the best job with the scissors, but he is going around and just cleaning it up and making sure everything is nice clean and even so here we are with the final touches that he made all right the next step is to sew the two pieces together right now he's sewing the part where my head goes basically that's the most important stitch to bring your do-rag together he is using a serger machine to do this i'll explain the types of stitches that you need later on but that is the stitch that he is using right now oh. the next thing that he is doing is so you got to take it to somebody who knows how to sew basically right right is the strings of the do-rag he's using the serger machine on also this is just to close up any frizzy parts of the do-rag like i said i will go over that again later on and then here is the final product of the do-rag it looks super oh, clean so all right waivers okay. i'm back with the final product so i'm just gonna go over some more tips for you guys when you're creating your own do-rags i'm gonna tell you guys some of my mistakes i so wonder start is, out it, with is it cheaper is it cheaper to make your own or should you buy it you gotta buy the fabric, all right? You gotta find somebody who can sew it. So is it cheaper to make your own or is it cheaper to buy a do-rag, bro? I can go to Walmart and get me a cool six, $7 do-rag, bro. What fabric oh, you God. want? I recommend using lighter, flexible fabrics such as polyester or satin fabric that I was using is a little bit too stiff and it's not really flexible and it is slightly heavy. You don't want to use stiff, you know, cotton or cloth materials, especially if you have waves. Next tip that I want to give you guys is uh, stitching. All right, so stitching is very important because this is what's going to bring your do rag together and make it look professional. So I do want to go over that right now. So using the correct stitch is very important. As you can see here, I have two different stitches on the bottom. That's just a regular uh, stitch. And that's just gonna bring two pieces of fabric together. What you actually wanna use is the stitch that I made on the top. This is called a serger stitch. And it's gonna basically close off the edge of the fabric and get rid of any frizziness or anything hanging off the do-rag, which I'm gonna show you right now. So when you cut fabric, it does get very frizzy and things start hanging off. But when you use the serger stitch, it gets rid of anything that's frizzy or hanging off the do-rag. And it's very important to use that serger stitch to make your do-rag look nice, clean, and professional. As you can see on this do-rag, the front of the do-rag doesn't have a serger stitch. But on the top, I do have the serger stitch. So it's just important to use a serger machine all across the do-rag to make the do-rag look super professional. And as you can see on these strings of the do-rag... Uh, we did not serge the edge of the do-rag, so it does look frizzy. But this is a good, good example of a do-rag that has been completed. Every edge, every piece of the fabric perfect. has uh, Yo, that is been perfect, used bro. with the serger machine. So it just looks super clean and professional. So yeah, making do-rags is super simple. That's pretty much it for today's video. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel. Make sure to subscribe if you guys learned something new. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bro, that, bro, that do-rag look perfect. You know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know if y'all would do that, if y'all make your own do-rag. Let me know, bro.